Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I thought I would do a, just a short take from the practice room today and touch on a couple of topics. Um, I didn't write anything down. I usually don't. I work off what's left of the brain, you know. Anyway, so uh, the first thing is, uh, the word I'm thinking about is consistency. Um, if you're always doing something different or you're always switching something around or changing this and changing that and constant, I call it turmoil. Um, it's going to hard be difficult to be consistent. Uh, every time you pick up your horn, it's going to do something different. That's all there is to it because you're changing something. Maybe it's the mouthpiece to read uh, the neck strap, whatever it is. Now, one of the reasons why I really like a neck strap like this, and I can adjust it here if I want to, um, for me, is that it doesn't slip down. And a lot of the other ones, I'm, you know, here and there and everywhere. But I know, like, for this one that I use most of the time, and I have other ones too, but this is the one I've been using now for, I don't know, two years. I'm not really sure. Um, I find that when I pick up my horn and I click my strap on, providing it's knits. Now, if I wear a jacket, you know, then I have to change this. I have even some notches. There you go. There's cut into this, right? Um, so I know when I click this on, then my horn... My horn is already in a particular position, and my head is not drooping down. I can't even play like that. See, if I do that, you know where I'm going to play in, in my nose. Uh, if I pick my head way up and go, I'm going to play in my chin. So this is my normal playing position, where my airway is, is in a pretty good position. And I've talked about that on other videos, so I'm not going to go through that a lot there's I, I think I have two videos where I distinctly show you about the angle of where the mouthpiece enters your mouth and and it's gonna be different for different people because they have different teeth and uh, some people don't even have teeth they're using double lips or whatever they're using so whatever your armature is by the way let's just hit on that a second double lip armature there's rumors that certain players use the double lip and it, years ago double lip was very popular on the clarinet oboe players use double lip every time they play learning to play double lip is uh just something that you might want to use sometimes or not i don't know uh you know it depends on what you do <laughs> it's a little bit different um Sorry, this reads a little squeaky today. It's kind of dry. I just put this on. It's not wet or anything. You know, I just put it on right like two minutes ago before I turned the camera on. Now, if I take my bottom, if I take my top lip off, right? If I play with two lips. So what happens is, if you get to the upper register, that's where it gets a little bit insecure because the mouthpiece wants to kind of be in a different place. Um, so that's where you might have trouble. One thing it will do though, it'll stop you from biting so hard if you have trouble biting and you're making big grooves on the top of your mouthpiece. You play double lip for a while, <laughs> that's going to stop because your lip is going to be really sore. I don't use hardly any pressure whatsoever. As a matter of fact, um, see I told you I'm going to be all over the place, random 
random. And, but I don't want to make this too long either. Let's turn the piano on for a second. There's always a piano here. Uh-oh. I don't think it's going to work. I think it broke. Hmm. You know what? Give me just a second. Let's see if I can find out. I'm going to be off the camera for just a moment. Well, I see if I can figure out why the piano's not working. Aha, uh -huh, I figured it out. It looks like the cat was involved. The wire was unplugged out of the back. I think the cat was involved, you know. Um, let's do double lip. <laughs> E flat. That's about my usual note. E flat, maybe E. Either one of those kind of gives me uh, what I want. That's on the tenor, you know. If I just do the mouthpiece. That's double lip, double lip. Now if I do single lip, it's a hair higher, right? Because the teeth are involved. Here. See, I'm not biasing what I'm doing. I'm just sticking this in my mouth and just playing where I am. If your pitch on your mouthpiece, and the, if you play soprano, tenor, alto, they're all going to be different. I, I play tenor. As a matter of fact, I got a message from somebody, a nice message, and I'm glad they wrote me about the alto. I play almost no alto. I have made alto videos a couple years ago when I was still kind of playing alto because I needed it. Uh, I was doing a theater thing and some other stuff, but I don't really play alto. In fact, I don't even have an alto at this point. Um, I have my tenor, soprano, flute, clarinet. Um, and that's all I play. I'm a tenor player. You know, so if I get a gig, it's going to be a flute gig. Or a tenor gig. Um, anyway, there's a lot of opinions on this, right? So my opinion is, for whatever it's worth, is if your pitch is too high on this, I don't know what the pitch is. It's high, you know. So I can go up to about a C. Um, you find your different pitches. <laughs> Down to about an A. Now again, this reed is dry, so. Um, but I can actually go higher when I want to and lower if I sit and practice with this mouthpiece. Years ago, two of my teachers used to have us play just on the mouthpiece and practice uh, intervals and scales and different things. It's a great exercise. Um, but you could try the double lip yourself and see. I wasn't really intending on this video being about double lip. <laughs> but see, as I told you, I turned the thing on and I'm, I'm in the practice room. I'm practicing. Um, so when you put that onto the horn... You know, if you're not squeezing and you don't have too high of a pitch on your mouthpiece, uh, you'll get more of a vibration, that, you know, the resonance and stuff, if you're not pinching so much. <laughs> Fourths. So there's a little thing I'll touch on for a second. When you practice, if you find intervals that work for you, whatever they are. You know, I like to mess around with forts because there's all kinds of things you can do with them. Um, 
You can make up lines with them, whatever you want to do. Um, you can create in your improvising. If you're if you're improvising, maybe you're just reading and playing, you know, uh, stage music, or classical music, show music. I don't know, but if you do improvise, you can practice using the forts for your jazz stuff, you know, and it's it has benefits to expand your listening and your thinking about intervals, you know. Um, okay, and let's talk about just a minute about warming up or using the descending major scale. A lot of my students, when I used to teach privately, which I really don't do anymore, I just don't do it. I got other things going on, so I, I got away from that a couple years ago. I used to always have them play the descending major scales. As soon as I got to their uh, house or whatever, we would practice we would just start on the lowest note, whatever it was. And we would hold out the end. going elsewhere the thing is you know when you get to that last note just hold it out nice but you'll know right away if your notes are uneven or they sound like you know whatever then you keep going work on that scale a couple more times um, and you can do that with the minor scales then you another day go to the ascending but as a warm-up I like to do the descending and starting on uh, Sometimes a middle note, like F. And then go to your E, which I misplayed before. And hold out that last note. Um... Okay, so anyway, so that's enough stuff to think about for one time, right? And we'll, we'll do some more on another another video. That's just, you know, me in the practice room, what I'm thinking about. And I uh, hope you get something out of it. Um, and I appreciate your questions and comments online. It's 13 minutes. I don't want to go longer than that. And uh, so it's uh, Sunday, and I know here in New Jersey we're going to have snow. I can't wait to take the snow blowers and shovel out tomorrow for another two hours and clean here right snow if you're a kid it's great if you have to clean it all up well it's not that great okay catch you later happy sunday